There is a legend that says if one is intending to capture a dragon, one must slaughter a goat to start off with, then enlist a few strong friends to hoist a threesome of three meter long steel traps, grab some bags of goat meat, and trek two to three kilometers up and down knee punishing hills. All of this must be done while ignoring temperatures of almost 40 degrees Celsius. The first trap must be set up with hunks of flesh, and a few meat bags should be hung in the trees in order to scent the air. Then return to the camp, fill a bucket with cold water, and dump it over one's head before going to sleep. Next, revisit each trap in the morning and afternoon for the next two days. There's no predicting if anything will actually be caught in the trap, but if one is lucky and if the prey exercises its wild instincts, it may come near the trap while exercising extreme caution. And at that moment, it very well could be that the trap contains the world's largest lizard, a grim-faced giant known as the Komodo dragon. On this trip, our team visits the Komodo's home, which is in the process of being changed concerning their natural habitat and their socio-cultural environment. last home of the Komodo dragons. From the island of Bali in Indonesia, we fly to the airport in Labuan Bajo, located in the East Nusa Tenggara, considered to be the gateway into the world of the Komodo. The exciting part of our trip is our team's search for the world's only surviving species of dragon currently battling with the challenges of the 21st century. The population of the Komodo dragon has been threatened by widespread habitat loss throughout the region, as well as changes in environmental and climatic conditions. The major conservation issue here not only concerns the survival of the Komodos, but also the survival of the locals. In the case of Komodo National Park, the role of tourism is to finance park management, which includes alternative livelihood programs for local communities that depend on tourists who travel all the way here to witness the Komodos. Consider these images before us of a pier crowded with boats that serve the tourism industry. Who would believe that there was once a time when this place used to be inhabited by a fishing community with a population of only a few thousand. This pier is just one aspect of the bigger picture of Labuan Bajo. It's a picture of the tourism situation that has been developed by the promotion of the Komodo dragons over the past few decades. If you keep walking along only a few streets away from the pier, you will find restaurants and hotels standing in rows alongside tour companies. The tours take tourists to the same destination and the same experience, and that is to see the giant lizards of Komodo National Park. Why is this town's economy so very dependent upon the Komodos? The answer lies in the fact that the main source of income here is the link between the local economy and the tourism industry. The town and the natural landscape in these parts don't have many other points of interest. So the Komodos have become the sole attraction. So this island region is quite different from the other parts of Indonesia. Tujuan mereka yang paling pertama itu Pulau Komodo. Sesudah itu baru pulau-pulau lain. 
sampai di pulau pulau komodo mereka trekking di kawasan itu sambil melihat binatang purba itu untuk cerita bookingan dengan saya trip di taman nasional komodo satu hari kurang lebih dua paket dan juga dua paket ini ada guide membantu saya untuk mengurus mereka nah, tiap hari kurang lebih berapa orang Pak? dua paket Pak. kalau menurut penglihatan saya selama ini Pak binatang itu bertambah hanya di pulau komodo itu pulaunya besar sekali begitu kenapa saya tidak garanti trekking di uh, pulau komodo tidak garanti karena kadang binatang itu pergi ke hutan yang jauh dari lokasi trekking kita tetapi kami usahakan supaya wisatawan kami selalu usaha supaya wisatawan itu melihat binatang itu from the pier in Labuan Bajo our first destination in our search for the Komodos is located on Rincha Island we spend about an hour on the boat and we reach our destination in Komodo National Park the moment we step off the boat our eyes begin to wander around for the giant lizards that the park officers tell us number up to 2,800. The Komodos are not friends of humans. Camouflage and lying in bushes or tall grass are the way of the Komodos, so it's no surprise that we don't see them, not even their shadows. As a foremost predator, and even as large as they are, Komodos can run up to 19 kilometers per hour for short periods of time. Komodos hunt their prey and eat by tearing large chunks of the most tender flesh, like the abdomen and the legs of their victims. They have a venomous bite. Komodo dragon saliva contains more than 50 deadly bacterial strains. Toxic substances found in the lizard's venom prevents blood clotting which causes their prey to quickly lose blood. Even if a prey animal escapes after being bitten by a Komodo dragon, it will still die of blood poisoning because of the highly toxic bacteria transferred into the wound from the lizard saliva. Keeping these facts in mind, the walk in the wild in search of the Komodos must be guided by a park ranger, sure that we will not become the giant lizard's lunch. As an ancient creature that has survived and evolved through many of the world's eras, we must respect its natural habitat and minimize our potential for harming the lizard. The only weapon carried by our guiding ranger, Save, and the other rangers is a thumbstick, but the rangers only use them when necessary. Okay, uh, this stick for the dragon, because uh, as we see, looks calm it's like pretending to sleep sometimes they can be aggressive and we have to use the stick to block on the neck and also we have to hit in their nose because their nose very sensitive so they don't like getting hurt by the stick they will run away we've been walking in the forest for over an hour and still no sign of any dragons Along the way, we only see the Komodo's food source that is still alive, like deer, wild boars, and wild cattle. Save tells us that the dry season on the island has lasted longer than normal. On top of that, the temperatures increase every year to the point where the temperature now is approaching 40 degrees Celsius. Consequently, the Komodo dragons have been classified as an endangered species that stands a risk of extinction. On a hot day like this one, there is the possibility that the lizards are deep in the forest hiding from the heat, or they may be camouflaging themselves in the grass, making it nearly impossible for us to spot them, even in the areas around the nests are regularly occupied by the female Komodos. Now here you are nest of Komodo, as you see down there, there are many holes, but only one hole is the real one, so several holes just fake or camouflage. 
So the Komodo dragon, they start mating from July until August. And September, the female start to lay the eggs. So each female, 30 eggs in one time. And the incubation time, eight up to nine months. But from 30 eggs, not all hatch and then not all become survive. About 25% become survive because also they're uh, cannibalistic, so they eat each other. And the smaller one, uh, when the eggs hatch, the babies come out from the holes and by self they go up on the trees until two years. And then they feed small mammals like gecko, lizard, insect, also eggs from the birds. From the nest where the Komodos lay their eggs, Safe takes us along a route on Rincha Island. We do a loop and come back to where we began, and we still haven't seen any signs of the Komodo dragons. The following morning, we travel by boat from Rinja Island to another island that Save tells us has more dragons in residence. We reach Komodo Island, which is the island with the largest Komodo population in Komodo National Park. Abdul Rahman, the ranger on the island, begins leading us on our search. And it appears that we are lucky this time and that we have not gone very far before finding a Komodo dragon near the restaurant. The wild predator may have to accept defeat during times of hunger and risk its luck in search of food near human settlements. The Komodos know that humans are also meat eaters with just as highly developed predatory skills. They live according to the lizard's instincts, sunbathing, hunting, and feeding on animal carcasses. They lay eggs, protect their eggs, but don't tend to the young after hatching. A mature Komodo can grow up to three meters long, weigh up to 90 kilograms, and live between 30 to 50 years. They conduct their lives in solitude, since their breeding habitat has become restricted. Breeding zones can be found on only a few islands in Indonesia. Sorry for a drink for Komodo. Uh, this is water, this is no natural water. The, for the ranger and they put in the jungle. So later, Komodo will come to drink this water. Otherwise, the animal like deer and wild boar and buffalo will come to here to come to drink him. And Komodo always is hunting for animal this area, this place. So the Komodo, you can eat one month again with that thing, but no more water. The water you can drink three or four times every day. But Komodo, if you're hunting for an animal, the one animal, the one Komodo, about maybe 80% of the body weight you can eat normally one month again with that thing. But if one animal, three or four Komodo, we can eat together, maybe 10 days or 15 days with that thing. But water, same, three times, four times, every day we walk there from the day. Because from water, it's more water you can drink. If you like a pool like that, you can see more water. Yeah, no dry like a pool from the animal. This is more water. Yeah. And then, this, the pool from Komodo, no more water. We have the color. Because the black one here, about maybe from the skin or from the meat from the animal. 
But this is why maybe about maybe this is a bowl because Komodo you can eat everything, not only meat. You can eat everything for bowl. Over the past few decades, the changes in environmental and climatic conditions have pushed the Komodos into a situation that they're just not well equipped to handle. Mr. Raman tells us that the Komodo survival depends upon the basics, which are their sources of food and water. They may only eat once or twice a week, but the reduction in the available food has become a cause for much concern to many people who fear that the Komodos may become so starved that they'll start eating members of their own species. The deteriorating status of the Komodos ecosystem has pushed the Indonesian government to take urgent measures to assure the Komodo survival by returning the island to the Komodo dragons. There are plans to restrict the huge floods of Komodo-seeking tourists. It's also a stated objective of the management initiative to promote the voluntary resettlement of the communities within the park. Since the first human settlements on the islands were inhabited by Komodos, ancestral legends have been passed on that focus on the physical and spiritual relationship between humans and animals. Legend has it that there was once a princess who gave birth to twins. One was human and the other was a Komodo named Sabai. For this reason, the people here do this not harm karamat, Komodos. Yang Instead, they look out for them just like family members. Lalu Oh, di sini juga untuk permintaannya mereka kalau memang anak mereka itu lagi, sakit lebih parah lagi mereka bisa juga ke keramat ini untuk permintaannya langsung ke saya sebaik sebaik tolongkan anak saya ini sebelum saya mendapat obat yang ke laban bajunya untuk bawa ke, ke dokter ini dulu kita diutamakan nanti sebaiknya after walking around observing and speaking to the community leaders about the twists and turns of the future, we come to an understanding that the locals here don't agree with closing down the island to return it to the Komodos. The locals have given their cooperation in almost everything. They have never harmed the Komodos, and the Komodos have never harmed them. The locals voiced the fear of having to resettle to neighboring islands outside the park, since it has become increasingly difficult to sustain a living in Komodo National Park. Hunting on the island has been made illegal, so this is where the traditional ways cannot be brought back. So we don't need to imagine as far as closing down the island, just the plan to restrict the number of tourists which may indeed be put into action this year, constitutes to be very bad news for them. This region is the poorest in Indonesia. Jadi kalau untuk ke masyarakat Komodo, uh, ada 30 orang yang jadi guide pemandu, pemandu wisata di Loh Liang, ada 10 orang, uh, kulit, 8 orang kuliner, dan 115 souvenir shop. Dan selain dari tiga ini, asli yang dari uh, uh, Taman Nasional Komodo, apa yang lagi yang masuk ke desa ini? Kalau untuk hasil yang masuk di desa ini, yang langsung dari pihak Taman Nasional Komodo, khususnya pemerintah uh, 
pengelola Taman Nasional Komodo tidak ada. Dan uh, AC yang dapat seperti orang di sini dan yang kerja di sana selain dari tiga jenis kerjaannya masih ada apa lagi yang orang di sini bisa kerja di sana? Iya. Jadi, jadi kalau untuk perkembangan ekonomi masyarakat Komodo di sini memang uh, banyakkan dari souvenir, banyakkan yang hasil pariwisata pendapatan masyarakat yang kerjanya di Loliang. Iya. Jadi selain itu memang e, masyarakat di sini juga ada pengerajin. Jadi pengerajin itu pemahat, pemahat patung komodo. Ya, jadi sisanya nelayan. Apa e, ini bikin apa nih? Ini bikin e, patung, patung komodo. Satu hari bapak bisa dapat berapa ekor? Uh, sehari tergantung dari kayunya pak uh -huh. dan kualitasnya. Uh -huh. hmm, karena biasanya kita buat yang kecil begini itu bisa sudah berapa tadi? Tiga, tiga, tiga empat, lima. Enam, enam. Ini kan belum nanti sampai enam. Uh, bapak uh, lukis ini pahak ini lebih bagus dari kerjaan lain atau gimana? Uh, saya rasa Karlu Pahat ini yang sudah merupakan salah satu uh, pendiri kehidupan saya dan uh, juga untuk menjamin sesuatu hari-hari. Our observations over the many days that we have spent on these islands have taught us that the Komodos and the locals here have a relationship of interdependence. The locals respect, care for, and help each other observe the Komodo population. All the while, the Komodos bring in floods of income for the locals. Even now, we still don't know if the provincial governor's announcement to close down the island will be put into action early this year. But we do know that if humans respect the nature of animals and in the process develop a harmonious relationship with them, an interspecies friendship can be formed, much like the locals here and the Komodos that we have encountered on this trip. <laughs>